what I'm understanding, you're actually processing emotions before you had the realisation that you were Jesus. Yes, I started processing emotions seven years before I had the realisations of who I was. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to release huge amounts of fear, terror, lots of uh, traumatic experiences all related to my first century life, um, but I didn't understand what they were. So, so what happened was when I started processing emotion, um, I had a lot of uh, memories of being nailed to, to a wood, to wood and being, um, being raped and a few other, quite a lot of other memories associated with that that I, that I couldn't place because I couldn't remember the events of my current life but they were memories that had these huge amounts of emotions associated with them. And so I had to, during that period, of learn that I just had to process the emotion with the hope that someday in the future I would actually understand what it was about. And so the first seven years of my emotional processing, I had no idea what emotions I was processing or why they were there, and I couldn't understand them at all because all of them were about torture and abuse, um, and I couldn't understand any of them. So I, I just I just allowed myself to continue processing those emotions, um, and as I did that, I became more open and open, more open emotionally. During that period, I got rid of lots of my terror and my fear. And once I got rid of quite a lot of my terror and my fear, that's when I then that's when the other memories of why those original memories were there kind of started coming to me. So while I had some memories. Um, I had an event when I was two years of age where I, where I trod on a nail that went straight through my foot. And then I had memories, then I had memories when I was in my 30s, still not aware of who I am, of, of uh, being nailed to a, to a wooden plank and, and, um, and having a spear put through me and things like that, things that I just couldn't place. But they all had emotional content, so I had to just release the emotion. And I just trusted the process of releasing the emotion. And, and then I had other memories of torture, other torture abuse, uh, events that have happened in my life. Uh, and then uh, rape-based events that happened in my life, in the life of my soul back. Um, so I, I, did, I dealt with a lot of those emotions before I even knew who I was. And I had no idea what I was, why I was dealing with them. But I just knew that every time I released one of them, I felt better. So I knew that I just had to keep going. And so it was a very hard time, if you can imagine. Uh, during that time also, nobody would speak to me. My family wouldn't speak to me. Uh, my boys didn't speak to me for nearly two years. And so it was a very difficult time. Would you I'm call sure. that faith? Yeah, I suppose it, it is faith. Um, to, the faith that, you know, in the end, everything will work out. Um, I, just, I just knew that. Every emotion I dealt with, I felt better. So I had to just keep dealing with these emotions that I did not understand. But they were in me, so I just had to accept they were in me no matter what they were. And so that's what I did. I accepted they were in me no matter what they were and processed through some pretty intense emotions. Um, just like, for instance, the terror took, took three months. Um, I had these fits uh, twice a day that lasted a couple of hours at each time. Was, the, the only way I could liken them is they were, they were like cramps in my entire body. I'd be curled up on the floor because I couldn't move. And trying to breathe. And a couple of times I actually passed out and was taken to a hospital. And so like, that was my terror experiences which lasted three months. And, and this was before I knew what I was doing. Like, I didn't know why I was doing it. It just was happening. And, uh, and so that happened for the first seven, six or seven years, and then uh, probably six years. And then once I've worked through lots of those emotions of fear about my own identity, that's when I was ready to start accepting the other memories that actually told me my own identity. So it's a bit like all of your childhood is locked up inside of you. All of your memories of your childhood are locked up inside of you. And when you allow yourself to feel them emotionally, you will remember them. That's what I have. At one point, uh, um, one point I want to make is that uh, although I wasn't there for like the, the first, like, the first bits of dad processing, seeing dad processing through uh, through when I was living with him and uh, when I was around him, 
that was made it much easier to get through my own stuff later on. Uh, there's a lot of times when you're dealing through fear and grief and, and anger and as you know you're pretty scared about what's happening to you and how uncontrollable it is and how uncontrollable it is and, and how loud it is and what you're doing as a person. And your kids will, will go through their stuff later on and realise that that's what you were doing and feel a whole lot more, I suppose, faith and, and feel better in themselves about doing the same thing and knowing that it actually will help them as well. Mm -hmm. So obviously Tristan's seen a lot of changes in me during that period of time. When I uh, left the relationship I was in with his mother, I was physically, like, constantly shaken, like I had Parkinson's disease. So my, I actually, I was 33 years old and shaking like this all the time. So, if you can picture, like, that was the amount of fear that was in me. I was actually now, and people would always comment about, what, what are you shaking for? And I'd say, I don't know, it's just how I am. <laughs> I had that through stages of 17 to 18. Yeah. So, so... I was so locked up with emotion uh, that uh, that started coming out uh, once I was in a space where I was by myself and could actually allow myself to feel it. So for many of you, being in an alone space is actually a great benefit to actually dealing with emotion because in an alone space, you don't get projections. So while I was alone for a lot of that period of time, and felt quite lonely all of that time. Uh, I didn't receive any projections from people, so that was a real blessing. <laughs> uh, I could actually feel my emotions. I, I know if I was there right from the start, I would be projecting project pretty harshly. There was one time actually when Tristan came to stay with me for a while, live with me for a while, and three months later I had to ask him to move out because he was actually trying to shut me down and project it with my emotions. And this was about Probably four years ago, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was pretty late. It was, it was probably a year or so before we left to come here. Yeah. So it was like three years. So, so uh, I invited him to come and stay because he wanted to do with his emotions. But within a few months, I could feel his projections so strongly that I said to him, we're going to have to live in separate houses. So he moved next door. <laughs> and then I, uh, I could feel free to do with my own emotions. And, now what I'm doing is working through dealing with my emotions no matter who is around and how much projection I get. So now I can see it into emotions quite easily no matter who is around and how much projection I have from them.